Good morning. It is good to be able to share with you guys today on Palm Sunday, even though we can't gather together, we are still able to share the good news of what today represents. I know that you will be celebrating with your family, and I'm glad about that. I miss you guys, and I know Mr. Eddie and Miss Sue and Miss Karen and Miss Christy and Miss Debbie and Miss Lisa all miss you guys too. And we look forward to being able to be back with you again soon. Let's open up in prayer. Father God, thank you that you love us, that you never leave us, that no matter where we are, Lord, that you are there with us. And we thank you for that today, Lord. I pray as we share your word today, Lord, that our hearts would be open and that we would grow closer to you, that we would draw closer to you through your word, Lord, that we would learn something, Lord, that helps us, our relationship with you, be greater. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I wanted to talk to you guys today about Palm Sunday. We normally celebrate that together, and we're not able to do that, but it's a very important day for us as Christians. It is the day that was leading into Easter Sunday, which is next Sunday, it was the week that Jesus made, uh, the day that Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. He was going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. The Passover was a celebration when the Israelites, the children of God, had been in Egyptian bondage and they had been there for 400 years. And you remember, Pharaoh would not let the children of God go. Moses went to Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh kept saying no. And they kept being plague after plague. And then finally, God said, okay, you haven't let my people go. All of your firstborn children, all of the firstborn animals, they're all going to die. But he told his children, he said, all right, Israelites, what I want you to do is kill a lamb, take the blood, and mark it on your doorpost. And the death angel is going to pass over you. And so that's what they did. And none of their firstborn children died. And after that, Pharaoh said, fine, leave. He wanted the people to leave. And so Passover for years after that, ever since that time, the children of Israel had always celebrated Passover. So Jesus was getting ready to enter into Jerusalem to celebrate Passover and Jesus knew that as he celebrated Passover he was going to be celebrating um, he was going to be moving toward his own death burial and resurrection and no longer would it be the blood of a lamb that caused the death angel to pass over God's children but it would be the blood of the Son of God it would be Jesus's blood because Jesus came to die on the cross for us so and die for our sins so that we would never be separated from him, so that we could live forever with him. And so it was, it's a very important week. And as you guys know, and your parents will be reading with you, but as Jesus got ready to enter into the city of Jerusalem, he sent two of his disciples ahead and he said, you know what, go ahead and when you get to the city, you're going to see two donkeys. A donkey and his colt and when you get there untie them and bring them to me and he said now and if anybody says why are you taking those then you say the Lord has need of them so they went and did just like Jesus said and sure enough somebody said what are you doing and they said the Lord has need of them and they let them take them well this is very important because hundreds of years earlier Zechariah a prophet of God had written the very words these very words explaining that this is how Jesus would enter into the city and it was God had already told him and so it's written in the scripture it says in Zechariah it said tell the daughter of Zion behold your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey a colt the foal of a donkey so that had already been prophesied year hundreds of years earlier and here it was happening now and so they went and they got the donkey and sure enough they brought him back, and when they did, they took their clothes and they put it on, put their clothes on the donkey, and then Jesus got on the donkey to ride into the city. And as he rode into the city, the people took clothes, took their coats and stuff off, and they laid on on the road. 
And then they took cut palm branches and they laid those on the road. They also waved the palm branch and they, and they began to cry out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So they began to worship and, and praise him. And at one point, um, people said, tell them to stop. Jesus, tell them to, st you know, the religious leaders, they wanted to tell them to stop. Tell them to stop doing this. And Jesus said, if they were to stop, the rocks would cry out. So, you know, it was a time when Jesus was acknowledged as a very important person. You know, when we think of important people, we think maybe people that have a lot of money and they're really popular and maybe they're movie stars or, you know, politicians or actors and actresses. We think of all those kinds of people. And if we were to think of a parade that would celebrate them, we would think of maybe them coming in on maybe a limousine like the president rides, you know, some someone really important, we would think, hey, they're gonna come in, they're gonna start the parade, you know, this is gonna be a parade celebrating them, and they're gonna come in something very, um, uh, very, something that looks very important, you know. Well, in that time, probably, it would have been something like a horse and chariots, you know, they would have, the king would have been, uh, would have ridden in in his horse and his chariot, and people would have looked and said, man, he's really important. But that's not how Jesus came in to Jerusalem. Jesus, all throughout the scripture, talked about, I came to be a servant. I came to be a servant to all. And he talked about how we as believers should also be servants because we're following after him. So Jesus came in on a donkey. He came riding into the city on a donkey. But you know, even though he was just riding on the donkey, still people knew there's something important about him. And because they knew that, they took coats and laid them out. They took palm branches and, and laid them out on the road for him to cross over because they said, you know what? There's something important about him. His people, the people of Israel, had been waiting for a long time for a king to come. They were anticipating a king to come. And I'm sure many of them anticipated he's going to come in and he's going to come in on a horse and he's going to just throw the Romans you know, the Romans were oppressing the people then. They were pushing them down, and they were giving them a hard time. And he's, he's going to take care of the Romans, and, you know, we're going to rise up in power, and he's going to be a king. But you know what? Jesus came in a different way. Jesus came in on a donkey. He came in as a servant. And he came to die for the sins of you and, the sin, and my sins. He came to die for the sins of all, of all people. You know, we could... Jesus knew that we could not live a perfect life. And because we couldn't, we needed a Savior. We needed someone to save us from our sins. So Jesus came, and as you know, he was born a baby, and he lived a perfect life. He never sinned. And then as he approached the end of his life, he knew that God had a purpose for him. And that purpose was that he would die for the sins of all people. And so Jesus was nailed on the cross, and he died. But that w that's not the end of the story. Because not only did he die, not only was he buried in a grave, in a cave, a grave, but you know what? On the third day, he rose again to give life to all of us. And just like the blood on the doorpost signified that those people inside of there, that the death angel could not touch them, the door on our blood, um, the blood on our doorpost is the blood of Jesus. And that's the blood that protects us and that keeps us and that gives us life. And I know there's lots of things going on and people that are very concerned with the virus that's going on. And what I want to say is in Psalm 91, it says those who abide in the presence of God will be protected under his shelter, the shelter of his protection. And it said, no deadly thing will come near you. So God is the one that protects us. Jesus has made a way and he has died for our sins and he has made a way for us to be in relationship with him. And you know what? If you've made that commitment, I am so excited for you. I know this Sunday, Pastor David encouraged us to take communion together and I hope that you do that with your parents that you take the bread that represents the body of Christ and you eat it remembering that he, his body was broken so that you could have life, that you take the juice that represents his blood and remember his blood was shed so your sins could be forgiven and you could live in eternity 
with God, that you would never be separated from Him. So I'm excited about today. I'm excited as we get ready to approach the Resurrection Sunday, next Sunday. I hope that through this week you will remember the things that we've talked about. I know I've sent a email, an email to your parents, and they have activities that you can do throughout the week and activities to go along with this lesson that we talked about today. And as you do those, remember, you are valuable and you are important to God. God loves you. And he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I hope that you will make him King of your life. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, there's no greater time than right now. Um, I want to pray with any of you that haven't. And if you have, then just repeat the words after me as a rededication of your life to God. So let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, I just want to pray with every um, child that's listening today, even if there are adults that are listening, Lord, that are saying, you know what? I've never asked Jesus to be Lord of my life, but I want to. Lord, I lift them up to you today, Lord. And I just, as they pray with me, I thank you, Lord, that they are born again, that they will never be the same, that they for, are forever changed. So just repeat with me, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you came and you died for my sins. And not only did you die, but you rose again so that I could raise up, be risen up in life with Christ, with you, Lord. I could rise up with you and I could live with you and I could forever be changed and I would never be separated from you again. And so I just ask you, be Lord of my life, be my Savior, and I thank you that you do that, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. If you prayed that with me today, then I encourage you to tell someone, tell your parents, tell a friend, or you can even send an email or a text to Miss Carla because we want to celebrate with you and we want to be there to encourage you as you walk, begin your walk with God, as you begin this journey with God. Don't forget, God loves you and we love you too at Impact Church. We miss you guys. Look forward to being back with you soon. God bless you.